So a couple of things about me. I am fairly pragmatic. I'm not that technical. Um, so what you're going to hear from me today is probably more of a business perspective view of big data and, and how people are using it and where I think the main issues are, <coughs> um, as opposed to the specific technology that necessarily underpin it. So uh, big data, what is it and what does it really mean? Um, <clears throat> what I loved about this quote, is quite I found as well, which is really interesting, which sounds a lot more impressive. It's from IBM, of course. So we create 2.5 billion bytes of data every day. And what that actually translates to is what Eric Schmidt said a little while ago in the last presentation, is that it's actually five exabytes every two days. But this is from IBM, so it's probably trustworthy and definitely something you should keep your eye on. <laughs> so, um, and it's big data. But the whole point is, as you can see from here, it's coming from everywhere. And, and you know, this is the perspective of machine-generated data, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what I wanted to focus on probably a little bit is why bother? Why, what does it all actually really mean for us? Well, the first thing, and I think what's driving big data, is that we actually have a capacity to collect it. Um, so we're, organizations are collecting far more data than they ever did. <laughs> Cost of storage has gone down significantly. So, well, let's not throw it away like we did 20 years ago. Let's just keep it. Let's let it grow. So there's we're collecting more. Um, the second part of that is with big data is that, well, what do we do with it when we've got it? Well, we've got to make it transparent. We've got to make it usable. Um, I think that's really the kind of the shift in what people are saying. Well, now we've got all this information. How do we use it? What do we do with it? And finally, the thing that we do about it is we create better tailored products and services. So organisations who are now collecting far more data who can actually do something with it, well, what do they want to do with it? They want to make more money. How do you make more money? Better products, better services, better customers, etc. So, and I stole that from McKinsey. It's not my thinking again. So um, I don't do a lot of thinking, by the way. Uh, this other guy had another really good quote, David McCandles, data is the new oil. And I think this is the whole point about big data, is that people are looking to their data to extract value from it, to actually make significantly more money from those assets than they did in the past. And I think organisations who are looking at the data they collect and how they use it and are being strategic about that data, that's really the conversation around big data. And I liken it to the Canadian tar fields. In reality, I think there's always been a lot of data around. Um, we just haven't collected it. Go back to you know, analog film, there's been a lot of films being done, but really because they're on analog, we couldn't do anything with it. We couldn't use it in any way. It was never counted as data per se. Um, and now we've actually got the technology that allows us to capture it and use it. Um, and I think, again, coming back to why is big data so prevalent now, why are people talking about it? It's because we finally got the technologies that enable us to use it effectively a little bit like those tar fields, it's finally at a point where you can actually uh, extract the oil out of those tar fields and make a profit. The next thing I like though is Gartner saying it's all hype. We haven't quite got to the peak of the hype, but we're almost there. So I think we're going to be another two years of just really people banging on about it a lot before we get to the point where people are actually using it a lot. So, um, you know, in terms of and it is a, it's a good model to look at, to say, well, how far are we away? And according to Gartner, two to five years before most organisations will actually start to use big data in a real meaningful way. Um, so I'm going to talk about those organisations. I'm not going to talk about some of those others like Google. Um, Google, yes, uh, uses big data and is world-renowned for its big data usage, etc. Um, but it's on its own. You know, there are a few organisations that are part of that club, but fundamentally, you know, in terms of all the organisations on the planet, it's there by itself. We then, in Australia, we could probably point to Telstra. But beyond Telstra, the norm is that little pixel dot right there over there, which is most people's data, most people's collected data. And that's still a lot of data. It's not little. Um, but compared to some of the issues that are being discussed around big data, they're infinitesimally small. Um, and so part of what I want to talk about today is really the technologies that help the norm to better use their data, to actually use in essentially what they have as big data. So coming back down to you know, what is the norm, um, this was a recent study by BI Survey um, number nine from August 2010. I don't have this year's um, yet. But fundamentally, most organisations who use data for analytics, um, the median that they use is 6.6 .6 gigabytes. There will be extremes, of course, and there'll be, you know, much higher, much lower, but fundamentally organisations have a reasonable amount of data that they should really use well. 
Uh, and so how do they use it well and how, you know, what can they do with it? Um, it's not about the size of your data. It's a really about what you do with it. Um, how quickly can you utilize it? What are the workloads you can do with it, etc. Traditional BI. So coming back to you know, what, what makes big data so exciting uh, from my perspective is that the traditional data warehouse model, the traditional model of dealing with data is slow, it's painful, it's costly. By the time you think of a problem, by the time you load the data, by the time you go through that whole process, you're 12 months down the track, your business problem is gone, your opportunities disappeared, and basically you're left holding the baby. And so what, what really needs to happen is that organisations have to completely shift the way in which they use their data. They have to use it far more effectively, far quicker uh, to get inside. And as part of that process, one of the interesting things that came again out of the, the, uh, the BI study I mentioned but previously is that um, speed of query time, and it's interesting that they go up to over 30 minutes for a query. I don't know any business user that's going to hang out at a terminal for 30 minutes let alone an iPad, which would have you know, run out of battery probably by that stage. But um, the longer your queries take, and again, from a big data perspective, the less likely you're going to get any benefit out of your data. Um, and so one of the things that certainly we see from uh, Yellowfin, and I should have explained that way early on, you know, we're just a presentation layer, we don't do the data stuff, but what we do see is that if, if a dashboard, as an example, which could be five or ten or six reports, um, loads in less than, oh, sorry, in more than 10 seconds, end users don't use the product. People stop using it. And that's 10 seconds for a dashboard, let alone a single query. So people are expecting queries to run within a second, within two seconds, for them to actually have a reasonable response time to be able to use it, analyse it, and return to that application on an ongoing basis. And so for me, one of the things that I think about with big data is speed, is how fast is it? How usable is it? And what I love about speed, coming back to this, it's not just speed of performance, but it's speed of development. And this is an eBay example. Um, so what I loved about this is that, from their perspective, they, they do capture you know, tons of data. This is a big data. This is a Google, one of Google's friends. Um, but what I love about it is that a business user can sign up to get 250 gig of data, which is a fair amount of data to do something with, um, and essentially just fill out a form and within minutes you've got a data mart that you're using. That is awesome. You know, that is a real big data scenario where a business user is driving an outcome of that data. We're not just sitting with a propeller head somewhere thinking about problems that they have with their data. Someone who actually says, I've got a problem, I want to solve it quickly, how do I get to it? And I think this is one of the best examples that I've seen of that. So it's not just about the performance, but it's about how quickly you can get to that data as well. So a little like the Titanic, the modern day data warehouse is a little bit slow and hard. Um, and it all comes back down to query performance and speed, etc. So here we have three people again saying the same thing they've already said before. And because I haven't got much time, I won't repeat it. Um, so yes, I am here a little bit today to talk a bit about some of the work we've done with um, around the Vectorwise product. So essentially, the benefits of having new technology today, and I, you know, the things that I love about, and all of these are the same, relational approaches to this, is it means that an end user can use it. For instance, there are tools out there, like Yellowfin, surprise, surprise, that you can connect to and start querying and doing ad hoc analysis against your data. So in my mind, the first thing a user has to be able to do is analyse it, and they need tools to do that. Those tools today are fundamentally all around relational models. Um, the second part of that is it's got to be quick. And the technologies that are being developed today, and especially the vector license we can see here, a really fundamental difference in speed of query performance um, are there to assist the end user again. And what I love about the vector wise product, again, it's, it's not needing to, to do any indexes. So we're not going to do a huge amount of effort from a, you know, a specialised resource to build that model for you. So if we come back to the eBay example, um, the capacity to get my data in to my database that's relational, that I can give to an end user and let that end user explore it is where the real value is. And I think, you know, for organisations that want to make use of their data, who don't throw it away, who want to extract value and give their business users that capacity, 
It's this type of technology that you really need to look at. Yeah, really big data is not for the data scientists. Um, if you need a propeller head sitting in a corner writing really, really complex code to write those queries for you, then that's not an end user scenario. That's not an end user making use of your information. It's fundamentally, as far as I'm concerned, data is for decision makers. It's not technical. It's not, it shouldn't be seen as a technical piece. And finally, for me, big data needs to be anchored in the real world. So although we can look at um, the Google scenarios, etc., we still have to think about your average organisation and, yes, the data they have and, and how they can utilise that data. So in conclusion, and I have been pretty quick, I hope, um, Google and Co. is certainly the NASA, uh, NASA of, of data innovation. Um, you know, they have, what they have given, driven in the market has really fundamentally changed the way in which people approach data. And for that, I think we can all be thankful. You know, it's the same as being able to write with a pen upside down. Thank you, NASA, for that. But as a result of those guys, they've driven the technologies that we have today that become consumer technologies. That essentially, uh, we as the average organisation out there can afford to buy this technology now. Uh, and I think that's, that's magnificent. And the last of it, they're going to keep doing it. And the technology we've got today is just going to get easier and faster and better.